All right, let's see if we can fix some leaking safaris. This is something very common, something very common on most people's buses and everybody's just kind of giving up on it. And it doesn't matter which type of rubber that you buy. Um, if you could get the original German rubber, you think, oh yeah, original German, it's not gonna leak. I had original German rubber on my original German safaris on my 1957 combi and it leaked just like every other bus i've ever had but i came up with an idea that i think will work and what it is is it's on all a lot of the new cars i'll show you in a minute but let's look at first where the leak comes from uh, typically when the glass shuts right here it doesn't leak coming in right here where it normally leaks is the water goes down and goes beneath um, right here um, and goes up and over and under and then back out over here because this part where it smashes down get my fingers out of the way here um, this part where it smashes down is sealed but what happens is the water goes if you can see down here it goes underneath and then it goes up and over this part right here because this little groove that goes on there is not designed to stop water from leaking on either type of rubber it's designed just to slide on over this this uh kind of i don't know where it is metal pressed metal edge and it's designed to just stay on there so the water just goes up and over the top of that and out and through your safari typically and it usually finds a place um where the rubber is kind of like this where it's kind of crumpled a little uh I'm trying to see here where the other one See, this one was kind of ratty along there. You know, that sort of thing where it's kind of wide and narrow. So, on the new cars, they use a product that's uh, designed for stopping that leak. Now, there was one way you could do it. Probably, you could probably put silicone on here and silicone glue these on. It would be awful to ever take them back off. Um, I wouldn't want to do that. But you could probably get away with that. It probably would work too. But again, the, the mess and everything else. And when you go to take it off, you're going to have all that residue from the silicone. Really hard to remove. Uh, this product leaves a lot of residue. But it it is a lot easier to clean off. You can just take uh, acetone, lacquer thinner, paint thinner, a lot of different products and get it off. So on your newer cars, they typically use this type of a butyl sealing tape uh, system. And what it is, you've probably seen it and didn't know what it was. It's a, it's like an asphalt type tape, I want to say. It's kind of like a double edged, um, it's not really tape, it's just a product. Uh, and it's kind of like plumber's putty but super sticky and what this does when you put it on there it'll always stay wet so that you can get it back off it's kind of sticky when it's on there but it's it always stays wet when it's on there it'll stop that it'll kind of seal that area up from letting the water go up and over the top of that lip and so what I'm going to do is take this three quarter inch stuff which they sell this on Amazon you can find it there uh, I'll put a link in the description this is three quarter inch by 30 um, and I'm gonna cut it in half I'm just gonna put a little bit over the top lip I'll show you later um, and carefully put the rubber back on so in order for this to work you're gonna have to have your rubber already pre-fitted install the rubber and then remove it and clean like all this dirt in the groove that's not going to fly got to get it clean so it's got to be clean and and clean here and then put it on the butyl and then install it and then when you put it install it you got to make sure that you get it all on there nice 
and the reason you want to pre-install the rubber is so that you don't have too much of this going on it's got to be really well on there and then that should stop the leak so this bus has very little um, whistle inside I'm gonna see if this takes it all the way that would be amazing It'd be the first bus I've ever had that had no whistle at all going down the freeway it's got very little tweet tweets going on up sound like from up here in the top so I'm hoping I can get rid of that and uh, it, it does have a massive window leak so I want to fix that um, so anyway we'll see if it takes care of it I'll talk to you a little bit later in the video so I use my giraffe tools pressure washer set up all the time for washing cars to actually clean the rubber groove out it looks like it did a pretty good job all I did was just pressure wash it out really good get all the dirt out of there that should take care of that if you didn't have a pressure washer you could always use the little I'm trying to think nylon brush some water would be a little bit fun to clean that out without the pressure washer believe me having that thing around it just so nice so I'm gonna take the sprayway glass cleaner clean out the rubber groove clean this all this up really good we'll go ahead and remove these things need to be out of the way you can't have any obstructions in there while you're trying to put this thing on with butyl because it's gonna be a little harder to do it's gonna need a rubber mallet and stuff knock it on there so clean it all off get it ready to put on Well, I've never done this before, but I really think it's going to work. Well, stuff's like messing with plumber's putty that's sticky, though, so it's, I'm already having some issues. So anyway, I'm going to stick it right along the top of this edge. So I cut it in half. The reason I did that is because it doesn't need to be very wide. I didn't, I couldn't find the, like, a quarter inch stuff. You got to really be careful when you surf on Amazon looking for this stuff that you're not going to get foam tape. It's not the same thing. This stuff's like rubber that never dries. It's like that. It's like and it and it's it becomes like a a clay almost that it's kind of like it's a bit like plumber's putty. Kind of a little tough to play with especially this product isn't that bad there's sticky 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 butyl and uh, you got to be careful which one to get this one I think is about the right composite of it and I, I know just the hard parts going to be getting the rubber on so I'm certain this will work Because it is sticky, sticky, sticky stuff. It's like using a roof tar. Kind of. Like putting Henry's around your rubber almost. But then when it sticks itself, <laughs> it's no good. It's, it just, that's it. <laughs> you don't want it to do that. But it's alright, because all you do is just continue on. You can just put some on top of the other one and all that it's like clay it'll mold to itself so it's kind of like sticky clay kind of like doing using plumber's putty to put your rubber on with but super sticky
All right, so I'm just gonna go on like that. And then I'll see how the rubber goes on. That's why you need the rubber preformed and everything's gotta just go right on. All right, so now I've got all this coat coated with butyl and it's all sticky. Everywhere you go, it's nice and sticky. And so it becomes like, it's almost like using silicone that never dries on your rubber to put it in. But it's like, I don't know what this is made out of. It's maybe an asphalt rubber composite stuff. They, they use it to put uh, a lot of rubber on the new cars. Um, and they use it also for yeah, behind your door panel they'll always have plastic and they'll have a bead of this stuff and then what they'll do is they'll put the plastic on over that and then if you notice that stuff stays always wet when you go pulling your plastic off and you can it stays pliable you can always put it back on if you're real careful sometimes that's what this stuff is so anyway I'm gonna play around with this for a little bit off camera and then I'll show you what I'm doing as I go well this is a problem so I went down and got some better stuff. This is uh, what came with the safaris. If you notice inside here, uh, at the end, if you can even see, there's a little sealing lip. Mm. On just this side, if you can see that in there. So a little flattened out sealing lip. Barely can see it. And let's look at the new one and the new one has a lot better ceiling lip on there it's a lot bigger and it has a double so on top of that I'm thinking sliding the butyl inside here so that when you have here where it's uneven see how it's like uneven along there and along here it's a little uneven you know right there uneven from the welding and all that almost all the buses are going to have issues like that so and this one here's got a really bad one in this corner just was just you know didn't turn that turn out really good oh, got you guys out of frame right here so that's not where it was leaking it wasn't really leaking much on this side it was leaking on the other side but i don't know it's just they leak everywhere so I'm going to attempt to get this to not leak, so hopefully, I mean, it, it's not going to be like, you know, 100% not leaking, but I'm going to try to get it pretty close to where, you know, when you're working, it doesn't. So now, these here, this is called a company called Trim Lock, T-R-I-M-L-O-K. They make rolls of this in Orange County, and or they I don't know where it's made but it's way better quality than the stuff on the other it's you can see how it's adhered to this is much better than what they used the glue method they used on the other one wasn't very good so you can feel the quality of this is better and I, I might be able to get someone to carry this um, like I'm talking to Eddie and Dave's garage he may end up having this pretty soon so keep if you, if it's not there in the description at the point when I'm done come back and take a look in the future and see if I've got a link in the description for this product this actual trim lock product which I think is superior to the stuff that you get from Wolfgang I'm not saying his is bad I mean this I think it's just better so anyway let me do a little bit more off camera. I'll see if I can get it to work. And like right now, I'm kind of doing a little bit of this. And it, it, I put the stuff on this way. And when I'm putting the rubber on, it just kind of splays it. And it doesn't seem to work that well. But if I think if I just stick it in the groove, like what I've got here, and then put it on, it'll kind of push it in. And then it'll fill the voids as needed right here. And also stick to that really good and seal it. So it'll give it like a triple seal instead of a double. Let's see if it works.
All right, so far, uh, it, the only thing I've noticed is it's been really hard to shut these. I mean, that could be just because they need to break in, the rubber does, and it's really cold out right now. So maybe I'll have to heat them up with a heat gun and push them shut a few times to get them to soften up and form. So maybe it's just like, let's look here. Oh, it's really stiff, but they always are stiff when they're new. It's probably like this little bit of wrinklage in the corner. If you can see that, a little tiny bit of wrinklage in there. And the quality is just a little bit better. You have to just squeeze them a bit because the butyl's in there too. A little bit of extra thickness in there. You're giving us a little fight, but. All right, I'm gonna let this sit till tomorrow. It's getting dark, as you can see here, and then we'll convene on this tomorrow and see what happens. And you never know, maybe we'll have a solution. It really feels like, honestly, the way these things went on, it feels like there's no way it could leak. So I'd be surprised if it does. <laughs> we'll see. You never know until you're done. So we'll find out. All right, to get these latches to work, um, I actually had to uh, notch out the inner uh, rubber because it's just a little bit, just a little bit thicker because it's better quality. Again, if you can see that edge is just a rolled over edge. This one here is kind of squared off. Let's see if we can get up close so you can see. See, that's kind of squared off that edge. And this one's like a little bit rolled over. I don't know if you can see that. If the stupid camera would focus, it's rolled over. So, yeah, it, it does work. Uh, and I think what's going to happen is it's going to need to sit shut for several days. It's usually what has to happen with these safaris anyway is you gotta let them set in the sun, shut, and let them just get hot. So the rubber will apply. You may even have to, you know, check them before you paint it or whatever if you're really crazy and need it to be perfect. Then make sure that metal is bent in the right direction. It could be a little bit too far forward. It's probably just my metal work that's a little off. I really, that's what, because I mean, even the, Original ones, I remember they had a little bit more rubber here than these aftermarket rubber ones that came with the kit. So, anyway. Um, so I just stuffed the butyl into the seal and then put it on, and it went on just super tight. So I wasn't able to film it. I was just trying different things. So um, I don't know if I filmed it or not. Maybe I did. But um, I just was trying different things until I got it to work. And like I said, these are really, really tight right now. But I think as it's in the sun for a while, then like right now, you could not op open and close these from the inside of the bus. And usually um, when I put safaris in, it's like that until the rubber's broken. So it's very, very slightly different than the other one. The thickness of this part right here is about the same, but it just, the quality is a little bit better. It's just, so it's just slightly stiffer than this. It's a little softer. And this feels more like the original stuff did. I had original German ones in one of my buses and again, it leaked same as all of them do. But with the butyl in there, even those, maybe that would work on those too. That might help. You could probably just put stuffed butyl in the original ones, in the German ones, and it might help. But I don't know. I think this is just fine. And I think this is probably better quality. I had a problem with those ones shrinking, the original ones. They shrink a little bit, and then they didn't fit in the corners, and that's when it would leak the most. So anyway, we'll move on. I'll show you the other side in a minute. All right, so in the corners, you'll notice sometimes it lifts up a little bit, like around in here. So that's what I noticed on this. So 
all the way along you could even do this and make sure that it's just really tight because I, I know what happens is this little bit of jaggedness that from metal work or whatever um, that's where your water is going to leak through but if you've got the butyl there that'll help that from not doing do not do that but what I'm doing is I just take a piece of wood I know it's not the best camera angle but I think you can get the idea and I put the wood on like this like that and then I'll just cramp it all the way around a lot of time is spent in doing this stuff just to get it you gotta really want these things not to leak it's not like a 10 minute job so yeah just go around what I did is I went all the way around it I'm gonna go all the way around it and I use the uh, duckbill pliers as well I'll show you what those are like I, it's best if you have a better set of pliers I only have vice grip ones let me show you what I've got all right let's see all right so got these duckbill pliers Okay. Make sure it gets crimped down really good. Make sure it just squeezes that butyl a little bit and just gets it. Once that's heated up once too, the heat butyl gets hot. It'll just get super sticky. And then it'll just... Uh, you'll still be able to get this off, but it ain't going to be like really easy... A lot easier than if you use silicone. I'm just going around the whole thing. I want to get some of the, like they have ones that are just pliers, they're not vice grips, so it'd be a little easier. Try to scratch the paint. And then just try and get it so it squeezes that butyl into the cracks. Take a little hammer. I feel like a loose spot right there. Hammer it all the way in. Once it gets warm, once too, butyl is going to get warm and it's going to be super sticky and it's going to seal up even better. couple corners up here that are a little loose. The corners are where you're going to have your issues. This is where the corners, you can't see up there really guys, but the corner here, here are the worst ones. And then up here on the top, those are where the corners are is where you're going to have, you're going to have to really squeeze it. So with the wood, you know, to protect the rubber and just take your time. All right, so I'm doing the other side. I've loaded this up, just showing you what I've done so you can see. I load it up with the butyl like that. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's just kind of in the groove. The damn lighting isn't the greatest here. Let's see if I can get it. You can see it. Yeah, you can see the stuff in the groove there. Back it up, try it this way. Seems the lighting is just getting, isn't the greatest for this. But anyway, you can kind of see it there. I can, so I've got it in the groove like that. I just take and cut that piece in half and then I just start putting it on and just, Kind of push it and it really stays when you put it in like the other way without the butyl in there it sometimes the other stuff comes off you know the other product this is a different product too but i mean it's because i'm gonna try it with the other one on my other bus if the rubber's still good when i go take it out i'll just uh 
do it with the other it's a little hard to get down in there sometimes you got to use the hammer push downward or shoving it in there anyway that's what I'm doing just all the way around take the wing that off the safari on one side and then put it back on once you got past that area you just really you can't you can do it without it but it's better to have the wing out off so you can really do make sure you are really good about doing a good job and then what I'm gonna do is if when I get done there's any leaks what I'll do is I'll hit it with the water and I'll see where the leaks are and then um, once I see if there's any leaks which I'm not sure there will be um, then what I'm going to do is I'll, I can pull that part back off and then put more butyl in there, repack it with butyl and fill in a bigger gap is the only reason it would do that. It would leak. The gap was too large for the butyl to fill in. Otherwise it should just stop it. A couple hot days and I bet you this stuff will be so sticky you'll never, it, it will never leak after that. I don't know if it's warm enough out right now to really notice I'm wearing the sweatshirt. So it's pretty cold out. We've got just a really cold winter for California. Let's knock it in the groove. That's what I'm doing the whole way around. Hopefully you can see that, but anyway, I'll bring it back in a little bit. Now, if you can see right here, it's kind of lift up a little bit, or it goes around the corner. That's what I'm pushing down. So I'm gonna use my wood. So you can see here, I'm gonna use the wood right here in the corner. Hopefully I got this thing set up right. Cause I can see it's kind of splayed out on this side too. So you gotta really, it's gotta be right. of them duckbill pliers and do a bunch of it just process takes a while a couple days you know you just sit there in the garage and just take your time and just make sure it's right when you're done you want it to be right otherwise it's gonna leak and it might still leak a little bit but a lot less than if you don't do anything.
All right, I was testing this and basically from here all the way around the bottom, uh, very little water comes in when I get it wet. I get it right in this corner. Okay, you can see that little wrinkle right there. You can see that little wrinkle there. They get one right here and I get it right here. And it's also because my metal work was off a little bit. You can really see it right there. Look how far off that was. So these two corners were pretty badly off. It's not really that big a deal. It's not much. It's tolerable amount where, I mean, I just was hitting it with a lot of water right here and just a couple little dri drips came inside. So now where I do get a leak is at the top. And I'll explain to you why that is on this bus. So when I was hitting a lot of water up here, I didn't really crimp this part down very good for one thing. Second of all, this has a curtain rod right here. And it, this thing needs to go up another eighth of an inch to make the butyl smash. So I think if I put and took this off and did another coat of butyl, I may do that and then this will go away and I get some at the seam, you know, where the seam was. So that could be, you know, use some silicone on the seam really good and get that to work. And it might help a bit. So that actually would probably, I mean, I'm going to take you down the road now and a little bit and we'll see how much quieter it is when you drive it. And that's a nice thing to know. That's my biggest thing is I don't really drive in the rain much. And if I got a little bit of water coming in, that's all right. But um, if right before I would wash it, I'd just get a puddle of water in here. Just a puddle of water in there. It was just horrible amounts of water would just go underneath the seal and come back over and just fill up that whole thing all the way over. So that was no good. This is an acceptable amount of moisture coming through it's really not that bad so it's probably better than it was originally i bet they leaked when they were brand new with the german seals and everything but they wrinkle and then the corners like that they do wrinkle a little bit and that definitely is causing some of the leaks most of the leaks before were from underneath this portion of the seal coming underneath and then coming through underneath there so that's Anyway, we'll see if we can do a little more to it and bring you back in. So again, guys, I've got a little bit of seepage of water in the corners. So I don't know if I said that, but when I was driving it, I noticed because this one has this metal piece here, it's not able to seat all the way in the top. And I'm getting a little bit of whistle noise, but it's, it's not much. So let me... Uh, I'm going to take these windows back open, pull these down. If you can see the butyl in there, it stays sticky and weird. You know, the thing I like about it is it doesn't dry. Like the weather strip adhesive dries and then it has voids and it just doesn't do anything. But so if you just take these down, you can kind of see where there's no butyl in some areas. I'm going to put another coat of butyl on there and then. Stuff it all back in here. You got to be kind of, it's kind of messy. Not that bad, really. You just kind of shove it in the crack there and then put it back up in there. See if I can get rid of the noise. And I'm going to, actually, I'm going to take uh, a little bit of silicone and fix the seam. So, but I just wanted to make sure I didn't have anything but just the seam making noise. The corners look pretty good on the top. They didn't really, it only got leaks really with water in the middle. So. Anyway, we'll see if we can correct that and make it better. All right, so we got the window rubber in, and I got a little tiny bit of the whistle, but this was really tolerable compared to uh, my other buses. They really, there's a whistle, definitely. Um, and I can't feel that it's coming out of the safaris. It might actually be the vent above, so. Yeah, I can't. I've run my hand around everything. I don't feel any air coming in around them. But it's fairly quiet. I mean, this bus is really quiet going down the road. We're at 65. Uh, for stock gears, it's 
you can you can hear me when I'm talking. I could probably talk on my cell phone in this thing, and most of them I can't can't even hear anyone at all. It's almost as good as the bucket truck. The bucket truck's pretty quiet inside too. So this one's pretty good. But yeah, there's a tolerable amount of leakage around some of the corners. It's not much when I washed it. So it definitely improved it probably 80% or more. And part of that is because of the, uh, that there's only like an eighth of an inch sticking up around the, where the curtain rods are. And I didn't want to remove them and reinstall them. So yeah, that's pretty good. Really, really drives nice. One hand in the wheel, 65. Really good. Well, you guys, I'm going to call that a success. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's definitely quieter than it was. And uh, it wasn't really that noisy. Uh, but the water's not just running inside like it was. So I'd say the butyl, even if you just did the butyl alone, uh, would probably you know make it a lot more tolerable the safari windows not leak uh, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be perfect it certainly never was from the factory I'm wondering you know if I've had the German rubber and again I had the same issue that might work too if you did the same thing with the butyl with that I don't know I don't have any so I can't do it so but uh, you know even just using this the rubber that comes with the uh, with the safaris from Wolfgang or any other company that makes them and putting the butyl in there probably would lower a lot of the leaks that you're going to have so uh, and getting them to shut nice and tight is important too but you don't want to do too tight because you could break these latches so yeah I always um, push the window down and then latch it when I first do it and then after a while as the rubber smashes in you can open and shut them without any pr trouble inside it's just it has to break in so anyway all right so that's it I'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe